All right, everyone, how's it going? Hope you're all having a good day so far. Because I'm not. No, I'm not. Because I just found this family channel at the gates of hell, and I'm quite literally an utterly p That, uh, that might have been an over-exaggeration. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. Anyway, back to the video. Well, that family channel goes by the name of Eight Passengers. A family which consists of six children and parents. Family channel. The, the, the clothes in the name case didn't know. But the channel is mainly hosted by their mother, Ruby Frank. Now this channel has managed to accumulate over 2.4 million subscribers. And that was brought on just by filming their kids who don't have a say in it whether or not they want to be filmed because they are too young to understand. <laughs> oh, I think it's too early, you know, to bring out my AR-15 assault rifle in case someone pisses me off. Again, that was an over-exaggeration. <laughs> No one me off yet. Seriously though, imagine filming your children and making an entire career off it. I'd rather make a time lapse of my left ball like and sell it on the internet. And when I mean film, I mean filming only the most private of conversations, even filming the child's punishments. I mean, for example, Ruby thought a reasonable punishment for a child would be to tell him to sleep on a beanbag for several months. All because he played a prank on his brother where he said that they were going to Disneyland when they, they weren't. <laughs> no, let's get real, it's a prank. Pranks are funny. Pranks are cool. <laughs> I love pranks. But Ruby didn't find that funny at all. No, 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 no. She's not in our category of humour. She thought it was a burden, so she made him sleep on a beanbag for several months. <sighs> One second. I just, gotta, I just gotta get something for you, Ruby. <sighs> so here is your reward, Ruby, for being such a great mother. Yes. Seriously, you suck. On this, this is just a... A book on self-development. Something you could use yourself, Ruby. But getting more into the video, I thought, you know, why not? Let's talk about what makes a good parent, you know, because uh, I know a lot about taking care of babies, don't I? All those millions of kids I waste every single night. Whoa, whoa, now I'm very sorry for interrupting this video. However, we are coming very close to our big milestone, 100,000 subscribers. We're 30,000 away, 30,000. And it would just be a blessing to have you a part of our regime. But anyway, uh, back to the video. <coughs> sorry for interrupting. All right, welcome class to today's session 101 on how to take care of your children properly because some of us... Some of us apparently don't know how to do that. So, hope you're all feeling great today. Hope you're, you know, all waiting to be educated by myself. The master of taking care of children, of course. That just sounded, uh, yeah. Well, the first thing would be to show them love. Yes, who would have thought, eh? Showing your children love is actually a requirement when having kids. Wow, <laughs> I never would have thought that. And the second thing to teach your kids would be discipline. That's right. Otherwise, like my nan would say, you can't be getting away with murder. <laughs> Aye, poor old bloke. Just glad they haven't found the body yet. The third thing would be, of course, to provide for them. Give them a lovely home, make them food, take care of them, take them to school, ensure they have friends. But of course, sending your kids to the wilderness for several months isn't exactly providing for them, is it? No, not at all. If I would say so myself, the other thing would be never be mean, spiteful, and belittle your children, because children's emotions are very sensitive, as are mine. However, <sighs> I wonder how much of my guide Ruby Frank followed. That her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch. And it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Right. Right, right. Yes, yes. Because we know that six-year-old children are very much capable of making their own food, aren't they? Teacher calls in the school saying that your child has no lunch and your response is that she forgot to make it. A six-year-old child forgot to make your lunch. Surely that's not her responsibility to be making lunch for herself at the age of six. When I was six-year-old, I could barely piss straight, let alone make my own lunch. Not much has changed. I think it's your responsibility as a mother to take care of your child, you know, actually nature for them, take care of them, make them food, wipe their ass. I think that's, uh, that's, you know, probably what uh, a parent does because my ass was being wiped up until the age of six, so. You think that's a lie? It's really not. But at the end of the day, you know, if your child forgets to make her food, hopefully she won't forget next time, isn't that right, Ruby? Hopefully, you know, she'll just come home and she'll be starving. That's the consequence you put on your six-year-old daughter for fuck 
sake, man. Oh, what? You've got your wheelchair downstairs. Well, why don't you get up yourself and get it, you lazy git? Oh, you, you shit yourself. Well, why don't you change your own diaper, bitch? Oh, what's the matter, son? You can't breathe? Well, maybe you shouldn't have forgotten your inhaler this morning. Huh? Maybe next time you'll remember it. Therefore, you won't come home from school absolutely gasping for air, you <laughs> I'm sorry, son. Here's your inhaler. Just kidding. That was dark. Um, th that was going places where I didn't want it to, but it did. It went there. So subscribe, leave a like on the video. You mad, bro? But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. She continues to exploit her children on the internet countless and countless of times throughout the year. And don't get me wrong, this is all for Ruby's personal and financial gain, which the kids have no cut off, by the way. She gets all the money. You know, she uploads videos of her kids crying, having personal issues, personal insecurities, arguments and punishments. But that's not all. Even films the puberty process. <laughs> Imagine that, uh, your face on the internet for the entire world to see, documenting your puberty experience. Being a teen is hard. First time shaving. Period. T talk. Embarrassing. Doctor's visit. Now I can only imagine my mother filming me when I go to a doctor's visit and I had this nurse fiddling around with my balls for 20 minutes. <laughs> And let me tell you, that guy wasn't gentle. But this isn't fair at all because, you know, these kids have got to go to school and people probably see these videos in school of, like, their son upset or, or their daughter crying or, or puberty process and period stuff. I don't know. It's just not fair in the slightest and they have to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And who gets to say that, do you think? Their mother, the owner of the channel who makes so much money a month off their own securities. Insecurities, that's the word I was looking for. I'll tell you for one, there's no f***ing security on this channel. Everything's public. Oh, and you thought that was bad. Well, um, how about uh, taking your, your your children's mobile devices away and never, <laughs> never giving them back? Yeah, that happened. Chad hasn't had a flip phone, a smartphone, any kind of phone, and it's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have no intention of returning a phone. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby um, November. in November, oh, and, and you lie. may you may never get the phone back. Probably not. Mm, yes, Ruby. So the strange thing there, Ruby, is, is that I actually understand taking your child's phone away from them when they do something wrong. I've experienced that myself. When a child does a punishment, you take their phone away, you know, for maybe a week, maybe two weeks, but giving them back, well, never. Never heard that before. I remember my mother doing this when I was younger and uh, she'd unplug the internet for maybe staying out too late. Or there was this one time when my father was cleaning the top of the windows and uh, I kicked the ladder from underneath him and I said, Hey, how is it hanging? <laughs> he broke both his legs after that. However, a punishment for that would only be a week or, or maybe two weeks, maybe only even a couple of days sometimes. But I just wonder, how must the kids feel about this? Interesting to find out because, you know, Talking to one another is actually a, a skill in life, if you didn't know that, Ruby. Communication, you know, that works. Unless you're deaf, of course. Um, I am sorry. I can't even do this video. Um, I'm deaf, actually. <laughs> Genuinely. It's got a hole in this eardrum right here. It sucks. And now I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like, I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally, like, told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're really they say some pretty messed up stuff. Even, I don't even know where they live, and they're pretty far away. So, yeah, sharing with everyone the fact that you don't have a group of friends, that's really hard. I'm sorry mm -hmm. that you're in that situation. And I'm proud of you for cutting off with friends who make inappropriate jokes and who are inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Of course! Your child has no friends, Ruby. Are you proud of that? You know, they've recently moved house, so they can't exactly, you know, just run across the road and call their friends. You know, their old school is an hour away, uh, and they can't exactly, you know, just, you know, just walk up their door and go call their friends like most of us can. Uh, they need their phones to contact their friends, Ruby. But why do you think they have no friends? Can you, can you see where I'm going with this, Ruby? Yes, Ruby. Can you see this, Ruby? And your son's facial expression just says it all, really. He doesn't look very happy with the, you know, the boundaries you've created. The fact that you're never going to give his phone back. What kind of a mother would ever put your child through that? Hmm? I'll tell you what kind of mother. A crappy one. You sit there and you watch your son have no friends and you still do nothing about it. What does that say about you? Exactly. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That you're in that situation. And the best part of that is you apologised to your son for having no friends. You said sorry for him. And she really pulled this, didn't she? Sorry you have no friends. I know I took your phone away from you, practically boxed you in this entire time. You can't leave the house practically. You've got no friends. Mm. 
You've got no phone either because of me. You're just a piece of shit, man. Just gonna have to get along with it. Shit happens. That's a nice way to take care of your kids and make them feel loved, of course. Oh, did I also mention as well that she made her son stay in the wilderness therapy for seven months? That's right. He leaves the house and he can't come back. He stays in the wilderness. For seven months. <laughs> He's a goddamn child woman. And the best part about this is, is it's very personal. Obviously, there's something going on for her to do that, unless she's just done it for no reason. But you know, this is all on the internet. For to see, everyone can see this. This is why it's not no longer personal anymore. The reason they go on to that therapy camp, whatever it's called, is because it's personal and they need to deal with it privately. However, according to Ruby, it needs to be on the internet for everyone to see in the public eye. And the best part about all this is, is that... She lost her son in the wilderness. That's right. She lost her son in the wilderness. They couldn't find him. And she made a video on that as well. She seemed quite, um, you know, I guess you could say she, she didn't go to acting school. Well, you know, it's a serious video when it's me sitting down and talking. But if it's the two of us sitting down and talking, it's like... Even more serious. Really. Serious. She was quick to announce that her son had gone missing and then quick to announce that he had returned. Obviously everyone's worried. Well, obviously everyone would be worried if a child went missing, but for some reason, Ruby, I feel... I feel for some reason you weren't as worried as some people were because maybe, just maybe, it could have been fake. Just maybe. It's all speculation, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. We did great. But yes, with that said, we are going to be making a change to the videos, making them a bit more, you know, humorous, making them more light-hearted. Don't like doing the dark stuff, you know, it just makes me feel unhappy sometimes. So we're going to be making a few changes to the channel. Also some changes in thumbnails as well. My face is going to be in them. So you can see my ugly ass before you click on a video. Not my actual ass. That can't be in the thumbnail because YouTube's community guidelines. My ass would be in the thumbnail. Why would you want to see that? If you do want to see my ass, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Boom, good plug right there, they're on screen. Go follow them. Leave a like on the video, comment, and share it around because, you know, we want to approach that 100k. That's what we want to be doing. So why not? Hit the subscribe button. What else you got to do within lockdown? And with that said, I'll see you all in the next video. You mad, bro? Uh, yeah. I said, tell me what you mad for. Uh, you mad, bro? Uh.